you have to talk with your wallets. That's the power the fans have. You can yell and you get angry and talk about it on social media and all that kind of stuff. But these guys aren't on. They, they avoid that stuff on purpose. If you want to yell at them, that's not the place to do it because they can just turn you off. And that's what a lot of them do. The chatter in Pittsburgh as the Pirates are cooked this season, as they've been cooked for quite a few seasons now, and it's getting very frustrated. We feel for the fans. We're trying to make sure the word is known about what's going on there. So there was some back and forth. Eventually, this guy, John Linder, who I think does some media out there, said, I talked with Mark Cuban about buying the team back in 2006. He loves the Pirates, but says the owners will never sell due to their business model. They aren't required to spend money, so they never do. And they make big profits every year through TV and everything else. Lost cause. Mark Cuban replied last night and said, if someone offered you a job that paid 25 million bucks or more per year to stand in Market Square and let the entire city of Pittsburgh yell at you, would you take that job? That job is owning the Pirates. Why would they sell? Kind of confirmed everything that we often get asked about and that we can cover on this show and many other shows cannot talk about Kratz, but the... Pittsburgh Pirates have a really good business model, and if there's someone that would know about it, it would be Mr. Shark Tank, Mr. whatever he is, billionaire, and Mr. Team Owner, who probably knows a thing or two about the books behind the scenes of how a team like that operates. And yeah, a I, go ahead, Don. Go ahead. No, and, I, and I'll be quick. I just think, you know, it, there's kind of two sides to this. Like, since he's an owner, he understands, too. I know he's not, he's had – some losing seasons too. I think he gets it and understands that, but it's also a jab at the pirates too, as well. So, I mean, he says, you know, he, he loves the pirates. That's what he says in, in this, when he's talking to John Linder, but he's kind of bashing him a little bit too. So it's kind of two sided. He's bashing him at the same time. He's trying to tell the people and show them exactly what it is like to own a losing team. And I think he says it well. And I, you know, you could take it, for any team, you know, you, you pick a team, whatever city you go to their most famous place and you're going to get yelled at. Would you do that for 25 million? Yeah, of course you would. So you got to got to find a way to win. <laughs> I think that's what he's saying. And, you know, being an owner isn't really that bad, even if you are losing. I think he's a I think he's saying he, he's a crook. I mean, Mark Cuban's from Pittsburgh, so obviously he's done a nice job running the Mavericks for years. So people are like, yeah. damn, you really need the profit like that? Do you need to milk the team for every dollar yeah. and be bad and just not care? I mean, the, the that was true the other side. Yep. Yeah. The true recipe. That's what he's saying. He's like, yo, he's not going to sell. I mean, to me, it's more the business side. It's like, hey, if you're making this much money on something and you have a guy who doesn't care about baseball and he's not a fan, that's actually the easiest way to pull it off. Right. Like he's never there. AJ Burnett confirmed that for us. Kratz, he doesn't go. You know, Burnett was parking in his spot all year until one time he went to a game and yeah. it was like, get out of my spot. And Burnett was like, eat dirt. So that's the story there. And the reason he has, has a great business model, the reason you look at it as a business is because of the fans, is because of the history of pirates in throughout history of, of the other teams that have been there. Like when those teams are good, there's generations of Pirates fans that are craving a winner. And he has an opportunity to, oh, excuse me, make more money when this team is winning in this city because they will own that city. They want to be Pirates fans. They don't want to be Steelers fans. I mean, maybe <laughs> – uh, yeah, you're attacking the Steelers, and I'm like, oh, I kind of want to – people love the Steelers. Uh, but uh, honestly, here's here's how I'm thinking about it. There's some owners that run their team like an Airbnb, and there's some team, some owners that run it like it's their baby. And the thing is, every, every owner could run it like an Airbnb because the system's set up to reward them for that. So if all 30 owners decided to act that way, they could, and there's nothing – anyone could do about it uh unfortunately the league would die if everyone did it so it's the it's these these guys like nutting and like uh you know john fisher and i mean to some extent the guy uh, the guys that own the rockies right so like we're they're they're okay with what they have and they're just going to kind of keep it there because they make money and uh they're, they're they can make a little bit like john fisher's the most you know uh, uh confrontation i've ever heard of and he owns a baseball team so it must be making a lot of money because if he if he really felt bad for getting yelled at 
he wouldn't touch this thing unless it was incredibly lucrative. So, you know, I've never bought it when they say things like, oh, you know, it, this is tough. Like we have, to, you know, we're not we're not making as much money or this, that, and the other. They have no, there's no owner has lost money on a season in uh, as long as anyone can remember. And uh, that's why you never hear anyone say that specifically like that. We lost money this year because it's it's all done through clever accounting and pushing off expenses for years and all this kind of stuff to make to, 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 this business. So it's frustrating. It's annoying. But they hear another guy who's in the world say something like that and just be like, you know what? It's a choice. He's making a choice, right? Uh, these guys make the choice to do this. And at some point, you got to take some pride in, in the thing that you have your name attached to. And they don't seem to care. And that is, it's hard to have much respect for someone who operates like that. I, I don't know. I, I like, I don't understand how, how someone's brain works that way, but you know, money, money talks when you get to these type of numbers we're talking about. Sometimes it's, it's easy to let, to not care about anything, I guess. Yeah. And that brings me to this quote yesterday from Nick Castellanos to Alex Tantum. He said, I would change that ownership doesn't have any severe consequences for losing for an extended period of time. Just like if we're in the big leagues and we don't perform, well, we get demoted or cut. If their organization didn't perform well, somebody else would have an opportunity to buy it from them to you know, keep it to where nobody can really own the game of baseball because the game is above true ownership. But that would never happen. This is a really cool way to put it. You know, I mean, again, yeah, it can never happen. I, the word that gets used sometimes, Todd Father, from fans on socials is relegation, which is a thing overseas with, with some of the soccer leagues, right? I don't know the soccer world too well, but little basically Ted you Lasso, can have a little Ted, Ted Lasso yeah. action. Yeah. yeah, Major league soccer team and it gets booted down to the minors, but it, it would never happen. But that's, you know, in an ideal world, if we could redo the way that, that the game is put together, we would do things like that and have checks and balances to our sport. Cause otherwise it, it just has a really deep impact, not just on the major leagues, but on baseball in general, right? Top father, like, you grow up, you watch a team. If the team never cares, then you probably are going to be less of a fan of that team, and maybe you don't fall in love with the game the same way. The summer gets super busy, and getting back on a good fall workout routine needs to be easy for me. With Anytime Fitness being available anytime, anywhere, they make it easy to work on getting stronger and more confident into my schedule. Kratz is spot on. It's got to be easy to make that routine happen. And that's why we love Anytime Fitness with access to 5,000 plus well-equipped gyms open 24-7. And this is not your average gym experience. They also provide personalized coaching support that provides members the best training, nutrition, and recovery guidance, which includes the Anytime Fitness app that generates personalized workout plans and tracks your daily progress. Get after it, FT fam. To claim your free Anytime Fitness trial pass, visit anytimefitness.com. And get yours today. We'll also drop that link in the description of this episode. Check out more info and claim that free trial pass at anytimefitness.com. Yeah, and, and if you think about it, like think about this, and it's not too far-fetched either. Like, And people are like, oh, this has never happened. How about just think of, for example, Aaron Judge, the first month he had this year, right, was really yep. not good, right? Well, if there was relegation, it's like, oh, we got to get him off. Let's put somebody else in there and get them. Like, I'm not saying, you know, would that happen? Mm. Probably not, but if there's relegation and the team's not winning and this, you would see a lot more moves. You would see a lot more, you know, pressure to do all the things. And I think, you know, it's that what have you done for me lately attitude, man. And that's that's what some coaches live by, and especially at a younger age and in high school and college. Um, I had a high school coach. That was his that was his sign in the front of his office. What have you done for me lately? And he's an Italian guy. And it was like, all right, well, you better step up or shut up now. And there would be a lot more pressure on a lot of these guys. But, you know, whether it's relegation or that type of move where, you know, the owners, you know, if you're the White Sox right now, like in our minds, like, what are they even doing? What, like, honestly, it's not even a, it's not even a team. And I feel, you know, I feel bad for the players. I feel bad for the city. And it's like, well, there's got to be a change and you know there won't be but there's got to be something else that we can do yeah I, I think just the power of media trevor i think that's the only thing you can do is just you know talk about it and and i i mentioned now there are some fan bases i'm generalizing here that like come together and some that kind of get in attack mode and defensive mode where like they don't want anyone else to talk poorly about their team they're like this is my disaster Pirates fans are not like that at all. They're like, 
let's share this disaster to the world because we are just throwing our hands up. We don't know what to do anymore. So we'd at least love to get the attention. Talk about what's going on here. Talk about the fact that we have one of the most exciting pitchers to hit the big leagues as a rookie that we've seen in a long time and that we offer zero support before the season started, just about zero support at the trade deadline and not much hope for the future when your largest deal is from a billion years ago and it's two years, $17 million for Russell Martin. The best trivia question ever, but the worst trivia question ever. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> this it, it, I get so frustrated thinking about this stuff. Like, it, it's one you have to talk with your wallets. That's what the fan. That's the power the fans have. You can yell and you get angry and talk about it on social media and all that kind of stuff. But these guys aren't on. They they avoid that stuff on purpose. Like, if you want to yell at them, that's not the place to do it because they're not. They can just turn you off, and that's what a lot of them do. So. Uh, the pr pr problem is it's revenue sharing is the, the hit would have to be taken, uh, over time. It would take years for them to realize that, that their decisions are hurting their bottom line. And then that's the only thing that would make the, make any changes happen or incentivize moving it. Like for them to sell the team, that has to not be a cash cow. And in order to do that, you're going to hurt a, a lot. The fans are going to get hurt and the players in that team are going to get hurt for a long time. Like no one's going to not watch skeins. To, to to stick it to nutting like we were <laughs> electric. He, he just got this guy and he's just the, people are going to be like well i can't not watch him and but at the end of the day that's going to make bob money and uh that's how they have you that's that's kind of how the system works and you're kind of uh damned if you do damned if you don't and uh that's you know when guys are billionaires that's how they like it it's it's a nice it's a nice life to have uh at that point so but again media media has a role to play if you know People are swayed by their personal perception. Um, that helps a little bit. The conversation um, being had all the time helps. And then there are some levers that happen in the commissioner's office or whatever. We know, you know, that he works for them and Rob does. Um, but, you know, you say something long enough and you push it hard enough that that sometimes it, it work out. So I, I guess keep fighting the good fight, but um, also don't hold your breath. What if, what if, you said about hidden or wallet, you know, that's where it makes them, makes it hurt. What if during a tenure of you owning a team for 30 years, they can come up with, up with a percentage during that 30 years of how many games your team has won. And when you go to sell the team at 30 years, just like the free agency tiers, your tax back to major league baseball, you're in the 5% because during that time you won 54% of your games. You're in a 5% tax penalty back to Major League Baseball. That would make the teams use that money that they're getting because that's all we're asking. I think that's all we're asking as fans and as fans of Major League Baseball is use the money that you're getting in revenue sharing to better your team and you will ultimately put a better team better product out on the field and you'll end up starting to win more games. But if you're not, if you're not ever penalized in the end product of I'm selling my team for $3 billion, then you're right. They'll never make a change. These are all great ideas. Unfortunately, I'm going to be the Grim Reaper. It'll never happen because they'd have to agree to that. So you're never going to get someone to agree to rules Some that would. harm themselves. Some would. Some would. Some would. But they, they just, they won't have that battle internally. They might have a debate about it and then they'll come out of it and say, we voted 30 to nothing that we would never do anything like that. That's just how the system works. Hey everybody, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. We're back here every weekday, all year long, so do not miss an episode. The videos are coming in all day. Here's another video you might enjoy. Baseball, the way it should be covered, 